I've been collecting manga for almost 20 years and have over 2,600 volumes. Let's take a tour of my library. It wasn't too long ago that I released my previous library tour video, but I did do my comic library tour video uh, recently after finally rearranging shelves and stuff. And I said in there, you know, if people want to see an updated library tour, go ahead and let me know. And so a lot of people said yes, and here I am going ahead and doing it. So not much has changed. A little bit of the organization has changed. Um, I have, I, I guess, about 200 more volumes than the previous time that I filmed. Um, so there's that as well. Um, so this video is not for me to go through, and I say this every single time I do one of these library tours, and talk about my opinions on every single series that I have because that would take way too long, but rather this is for me to just show you guys this is what I have in my library, and I'll talk about how I organize it and why I organize it in that way. Now. If you would like advice and stuff and you know because a lot of people ask questions about you know how did you afford all this um, how do you start collecting all that kind of stuff I have a video I'll link it down below in the the description um, I put this up a couple months ago to give advice to people who are starting to get into collecting manga um, so like I said I've been collecting for almost 20 years I've been in the game for a really long time I have a lot of uh, knowledge that I like to impart on people because I know that there's a lot of people who are new to collecting at this time And I want to be a helpful resource if you can given how long I've been doing it myself uh, That said also keep in mind almost 20 years means I did not build this overnight I didn't buy 2,000 plus volumes of manga on a whim and build this over the past several months I've built this over the majority of my lifetime. I've been collecting manga to address a couple of other frequently asked questions. People will ask, how much of your collection have you read? I usually stay around 90% of my collection being read. I keep 10% unread, so I always have options of what I want to read next. Um, so if I'm caught up with new releases, I can be like, oh, I haven't read this series just yet. I think I'm gonna check that one out now. Um, as well, people always point out, you don't have this series, or why don't you have this? There are a lot of reasons why I might not have something. Um, in a lot of cases, it might be that I owned it and didn't enjoy what I read, and so I decided to sell it. Um, I owned it and it was discontinued, and I didn't feel like holding on to those volumes because it was never going to be completed in English, so I wound up selling it. Um, or it could be something like, you know, I... I read it from a library or from a friend or online and never bought it for my own collection or as simple as i've never heard of a series before because there's a lot of stuff is even being in the collecting game for almost 20 years a lot of things come out and have come out in the past that i've never heard of so i i prefer if, if people instead of saying like oh why don't you have this instead phrasing that as if you haven't heard of this or you haven't read this i highly recommend this series i think you might like it because you like these other things i i just like that as a better way to put it but anyway let's go ahead and jump into looking at my collection if i think of any other frequently asked questions to answer along the way i'll go ahead and do that um, but i am going to point out here that this first part is going to be a little hard to film in a, a good way because it's a hallway and there's not a lot of room for my tripod to stand so I am going to be holding on to the camera at this point and holding the tripod to scan through all the shelves so it might be a little bit wobbly but please forgive me for that and without further ado let's go ahead and jump into looking at my shelves all right so this first section this first wall this is all my Shonen Jump and Shonen Jump advanced titles from Viz now I'll show you guys how I have it organized, but I just wanted to say this is, that's what this whole wall is. All right, so starting up here, right next to that Goku Pop, I have my Dragon Ball and Dragon Ball Z Viz Big volumes. The microphone's a little bit farther away from my mouth, so you might, the sound might not be as good right here. Um, so these are all sitting on top of my Shonen Jump section. And then next to it, um, I've put under this section the, uh, you can see, all You Need Is Kill, Death Note, and then that skinny volume is Time Killer is a short story collection by the creator of Blue Exorcist and the Revolutionary Girl Utena box set. Now, coming down from there, and those are up at the top because of the trim size. Now, coming down from there, we get the beginning after these few Japanese volumes. That's level E by Tagashi of Hunter x Hunter and Yu Yu Hakusho fame. And then one volume in Japanese of the Dragon Ball Heroes spin-off manga. 
Um, but we start my Shonen Jump series that are still ongoing. Um, now, I separate my series that are ongoing from my series that are concluded or also not just ongoing, but series that I'm still working on that I haven't collected all of um, because it makes it easier for me to organize whenever new volumes come in. So we've got Black Clover, Blue Exorcist, Boruto, Chainsaw Man, D. Gray Man, Dr. Stone, Dragon Ball Super, Hunter Hunter, and coming back down here to the next shelf is the rest of Hunter Hunter, Jujutsu Kaisen, Moriarty, My Hero Academia, and then here, for example, Nisekoi and uh, Nura are both concluded titles, but I don't own all of them, so they're still sitting in here with my ongoing stuff, since for me, it's still ongoing. Uh, One Piece is the first, like, half of the volumes, and then the second half of the volumes is down here, and all the way through to the current release of 96, One Punch Man, Platinum End, I also haven't collected all of Platinum End, uh, Spy Family, Undead Unluck, and World Trigger that I also have not collected all of, and that ends the ongoing section. And then the next part is all the stuff that's concluded, um, and if not concluded, then stuff that has been discontinued. Uh, so Assassination Classroom, Barrage, Beat the Vandal Buster is a discontinued series, Black Cat, and then that comes down to this shelf, Black Torch, Bleach, got all 74 volumes over here, Bo 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 Bo, Sibusa Renkin, Claymore, Kawa, Demon Slayer, and Demon Slayer, I've already moved down to the completed section, and I've put a uh, placeholder volume for that last volume, just because it makes it easier, since it's about to end anyway. Uh, Dr. Slump, and that concludes down here. And then Ice Shield 21, by the same author as Dr. Stone, with the same artist as One Punch Man. Food Wars, Genkaku Picasso, Gunblaze West, Haikyuu is another one that has one more volume coming out, so I've moved it down here already with a placeholder volume. Uh, Hikaru no Go, Hoshin Engi. Shuffling back over here, the rest of Hoshin Engi. Aizu, which I just need to get volume 15, so another placeholder in there. Jaco, Knights of the Zodiac, or Saint Seiya. Kuroko's Basketball, Muyo and Roji. There's all of Naruto. The rest of Naruto is down here. Let's set the tripod down. And then I've got the series Nora that I also just need one more volume of, so another placeholder. Prince of Tennis, Promised Neverland, another one that just has one more volume to come out. That one I actually have on pre-order, so it should be coming in in the next week or two. Uh, Raul Grad, which I need volume two and four of. I actually did own that one previously, and I sold it a while back with a lot of other stuff. Let's see, Kenshin, Samurai 8, Sandland, School Judgment. There's the Shonen Jump versions of Shaman King and Tegami Bachi fills the rest of that shelf. And then we get down to the bottom row here. And the last volume of Tegami, Tegami Bachi, Toriko, Ultimate Muscle, Ultimo, Whistle, Yu-Gi-Oh! I have the three-in-ones for that series. Yu-Gi-Oh! R, which is the only spin-off that's set uh, during the timeline of the original series. Um, Yu Yu Hakusho and Zombie Powder is that last one there at the end. All right, so now we come to the next section of the library and these shelves, um, let's see. So we've already seen up at the top left is where I have Death Note. That's just kind of pushing over a little bit further than I would prefer, but it's where I keep it. Um, but at the very top, this is like a bunch of big volumes and then it goes into my uh, Dark Horse stuff, which of course I separate the concluded from the ongoing, and then below that, other publishers. We go into Seven Seas, uh, etc. So I've separated that by publishers, and then the two small shelves right here, those are mostly Tokyo Pop titles, and then a couple things from other publishers at the top, and some things spill out of the shelves. I'll show you what I mean in a second here. Um, but, and I'll, I'll show where this is going to happen, but I do have another shelf that I'm going to be putting up soon 
Um, that's going to give me a lot more room for more things. That's going to happen probably the next week or, or two here. But uh, let's go ahead and get close up on this shelf so I can show you guys what's over here. All right, so this first shelf basically are larger trim books. So from Kadansha, we have the Colossal Editions of Attack on Titan, one through five. Six, we already know, is coming out. And then seven, I believe, is the last one. Then I have the Anthology hardcover and the No Regrets Colored Edition hardcover. Next to that, I have the first of the two Magic Knight Ray Earth uh, box sets from Clamp. And then the seven Berserk hardcovers that are out right now. Volume eight comes out in August. And we already have up to volume 10 solicited uh, to get to the point where it's up to date more or less um that would be 13 volumes and then material for a 14th of course after the passing of the creator kentaro miura um we are unsure if the series is going to be continued or if it's just going to be left as is um it's kind of up in the air but whatever the fact is it is a masterpiece that i'm happy to have in this format whether it was completely concluded or not uh, that said, next to it, we've got Blade of the Immortal. And then Volume 2 is just right outside of that shelf. And that's what I was talking about. There's a little bit of overflow. But I have, I'm have going to get that new shelf, like I was saying, and that's going to take care of some stuff. Um, and then I have the first of two volumes of What's Michael, the Fat Cat Collection. The second volume should be out soon. And then up at the top, because it doesn't fit down below with my other uh, Tokyo Pop books, is the hardcover for I Love Halloween. It's not technically a manga, it's written by comic writer Keith Giffen. Anyway, moving down to this next shelf, this is where we have my Dark Horse stuff. And I have all the concluded stuff first. We have the single volume Gigantomaxia by Miura. And then we have the three HP Lovecraft adaptation volumes by Gotanabe. And then I've got all of the two-in-one omnibus editions of I Am a Hero followed by Tony Takazaki's Neon Genesis Evangelion uh, parody book, and then that's followed by Trigun and Trigun Maximum. Now this goes into my ongoing stuff with Drifters, Keep Your Hands Off Azuken, uh, Mob Psycho 100, and the Reagan spin-off volume, and I have just one volume of Old Boy, so that's a concluded series, but I'm still working on it. And then we come down to the next shelf. We've got the first volume, this is the 7C stuff, so we've got the first volume of Q Hayashida's Die Dark, uh, second one's coming out soon, and then High Rise Invasion, the final volume of that series will be coming out soon as well. And then I have Saint Seiya, Saintia Show, the only Saint Seiya spinoff that has been released in, uh, in English. Uh, Miruko-chan, Smoke and Parade, so these are Yen Press books, and then we go into Vertical. I've got a couple of volumes of uh, To the Abandoned, the Abandoned Sacred Beasts, and then Ajin Demi-Human, which uh, I believe one or two more volumes left to release followed by Tsutomu Nihei's Opossums, and Blood on the Tracks by Shuzo Oshimi. And then I've got a few volumes of Nichijo next to that, as well as She and Her Cat, and a random volume of Wolfsmund. And that goes into Kodansha, the standard-sized Kodansha books, starting with Battle Angel Alita Mars Chronicle, which continues over here next to Fire Force and Orient, and then the first two of the Shaman King three-in-one editions from Kadansha, and that goes into my standard-sized books from Viz. I know there's a lot of glare right there, but uh, we've got Comey Can't Communicate. I'm trying to move the camera a little bit to make it easier to see. Comey Can't Communicate, Legend of Zelda, Twilight Princess, and then Zatch Bell. I've got one through 11 here. And High Score Girl. There's one, two, and three over there. So these are the Oversized books now is what we're getting into, the slightly oversized trim. Um, and these first ones are from Square Enix. So after High Score Girl is Soul Eater, followed by some stuff from Udon, we've got Otherworldly, uh, Izakaya Nobu, uh, Rose of Versailles, and Stravaganza, and then the two volumes so far that we have of Kaiji. And we have one volume of Made in Abyss, so just one oversized book from Seven Seas, uh, and then oversized stuff from Yen Press. I've got uh, Delicious in Dungeon, the first volume of Solo Leveling, and I have just six volumes of the Yawamushi Petal releases. I do need to catch up on that one. And then from Kadansha, we've got the oversized hardcover editions, Saint Young Men, and Vinland Saga. And then on the next shelf, the rest of Vinland Saga, I just have one volume of the series again, followed by Cells at Work, Cells at Work Black, and then Dewergelder Volume 1 is just hiding back there, but there's 
Volume 2. That's another series by Hiroaki Samura, the creator of Blade of the Immortal. And two volumes of Galaceum, Grand Blue Dreaming. I just have one volume of Land of the Lustrous. To Your Eternity, Wave, Listen to Me, also by Samora. I've got a few volumes of Welcome to the Ballroom, and then Witch Hat Atelier. The rest of Witch Hat is down here next to the collector editions of Pokemon, which means that we are down into the Viz stuff. So I have just normal Viz, and then it goes into Viz Signature. So next to Pokemon are the first two volumes of Asadora, which is followed by Beast Complex, which is followed by Beast Stars. So B Stars continues there, followed by Black Lagoon, Dead Dead Demons, DDDD Destruction, and Golden Kamui. And then coming down to the bottom row, we have the rest of Golden Kamui, Hell's Paradise, Levius, Levius Est. I only have one volume of Master Keaton, that's another one I need to work on collecting. Uh, Mobile Suit Gundam Thunderbolt 1 through 4, so I'm behind on that one. Terraformers Volume 1 through 14, so I also need to work on that. And then we've got Ultraman, Way of the House Husband, World Peace, and Zom 100. Now coming back to this thin shelf over here at the top, I've got stuff from a few various publishers. Uh, Samurai Man, Now, I Hear the Sunspot, uh, the 12 volumes of Cromartie High School that were released before it was discontinued, and then we go into my Tokyo Pop stuff. So that starts with Beat X by the same creator as uh, Knights of the Zodiac or Saint Seiya. And then we've got the Cowboy Bebop box set, followed by Furikuri, uh, GTO The Early Years, or as it was originally known, Shonen Junai Gumi. And that, of course, was picked up by Vertical, thank goodness, after Tokyo Pop went under. And then we've got the original GTO series, all 25 volumes of that. And then GTO 14 Days in Shonen, which is the only other title aside from the rest of the early years that's been released by Vertical. Uh, though there's more GTO stuff, like the Paradise Lost series that I'm hoping they'll eventually release, so fingers crossed there. Uh, then next to that we've got Harlem Beat, which was renamed, so it was called Harlem Beat first when Tokyo Pop was still known as Minx, and then Tokyo Pop renamed, and then eventually they renamed the series from Harlem Beat to Rebound. And so those are the same series, and it concluded with 18 volumes of Rebound. And we've got Rose Hip Rose and Rose Hip Zero, both by the same creator as uh, GTO. Love Hina, the Tokyo Pop editions of Planets. And then under that we've got Priest and Rave Master. I've got all the 32 volumes of that plus the 3-in-1 from Kadansha when they finished up the series since Tokyo Pop fell under. And then we've got Samurai Deeper Kyo, and I'm sliding on down to that last shelf there where the rest of Samurai Deeper Kyo is joined by Scryed or S. Cry Ed. And that's the end of this wall, but it's not the end of the collection. So we've just finished looking at everything along this initial wall, and that's all the Shonen Jump stuff, Viz Media, and a lot of uh, ongoing titles and concluded titles from a lot of different publishers. But next we have this shelf. Now, uh, also I didn't mention before, but all the shelves we just looked at, those are all Ikea Billy shelves of various sizes in the black color. Um, you can add additional shelves there, which is great for manga since they have a smaller trim size. And then this is a 5x5 Kalax or Kalax shelf, also from Ikea. And what I love about this shelf is that I use it, and you'll see this in a little bit when I go to the back side, but I use it as a room divider and I create kind of an aisle in my home library here. So this side of the shelf is what, mostly is what I call my creator shelf, where I highlight a lot of my favorite creators and their works by having them all together, regardless of publisher and stuff like that. Um, so these creators are, doesn't mean that these are the only ones that I love. There are a lot of them that I love that maybe only have one series or one series in English, or, which is most likely the point at this point, or which is most likely the case at this point, um, I don't have enough room on my creator shelf to add anyone else. Um, but for now, this is what it looks like. So let's let's go ahead and check out what I have on the creator shelf. All right, so the first section is for Hiromu Arakawa, of course, of Full Metal Alchemist and Silver Spoon. Now, aside from those two, Arakawa also does uh, the Heroic Legend of Arslan series, which I have not collected. Now, I've left room at the front here for the latter four volumes of the Full Metal Alchemist hardcovers that will be released. I believe there's four left. 
Um, so there's plenty of room for that. So I can put those in once I get those volumes. And then Silver Spoon, of course, is concluded. I would like to eventually get the Heroic Legend of Arslan, and that's ongoing though, so it probably wouldn't go on this shelf um, until it's concluded. But when it does, I'd be happy to add them on here with the rest of Arakawa's work. Now next to Arakawa is one of my favorite sections, and that's my Araki section. Now, of course, the majority of the Araki section is JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, parts 1, 2, 3, and 4, which are completely available in English at this point in hardcover editions. Volume 5 is beginning to be published in August. But I also have a lot of these other books that are by Araki or that are related to, like I have a couple of art books and stuff. Um, so I'm actually going to be working on a video profile of Araki. I've, I've done one of these before for Junji Ito, and I talked about all of his work available not just in English, but also the stuff that we don't have translated yet. And I'm going to be doing the same thing for Araki, but it's going to be a much deeper dive going over all of his works in manga and all of his stuff outside of manga. And so I'm going to be giving close looks of every single one of these books that I have on the shelf, because there's you can see there's a lot of stuff there that's not I just tried to zoom, not realizing I had it always zoomed in, so I'm sorry about that. But you can see there's a lot of stuff here that's uh, not, not in English and not very popularly known either. And then coming down to the next shelf here, I also have a few more. There's the uh, Rohan Kishibe books as well as some light novels related to Jojo's Bizarre Adventure um, that I'll be mentioning in that video as well. And that leads into my Inyo Asano shelf. So I have, uh, most of the creator shelves are organized in chronological order of when their series were released. Uh, so that's what I have for Asano here. So we have What a Wonderful World, Nijigahara Holograph, Solanin, the Solanin epilogue is that little bitty book next to it. Uh, Goodnight Pun Pun. We have uh, A Girl on the Shore and Downfall. And this goes into the Takehiko Inoue section. I have a Spanish edition of Chameleon Jail. Uh, there's the first volume of Slam Dunk in Japanese, as well as the entirety of the series, and the four volumes of Buzzer Beater, also in Japanese. Uh, and then next to that, we have Vagabond, and then Real. And Real continues on the next shelf over here. And then next to Real, we get the beginning of the Junji Ito shelf. Now, these are not organized in chronological order because the f fact of the matter is it's hard to do that since a lot of these are short story collections. Um, but I organized them more or less in the order that these were published in English, but also kind of in the way that looks good on the shelf because of the sizes of stuff like No Longer Human or Cat Diary or Dissolving Classroom being smaller than the Viz releases of the rest of his work. And next I have a section for Taiyo Matsumoto's works. Again, these are in chronological order. So I have Tekon Kingcrete, Ping Pong, Sunny, and Cats of the Louvre. And I do not have Gogo -Go Monster or Blue Spring. Those are two that are on my list that I need to get. Um, I just need to find them for prices that are agreeable for me. And then number five is getting released soon in English, so I'll be picking that up as soon as it's out. Now next to his works, I have Tsutomu Nihei. And notice for both Asano and Nihei, I do have their current ongoing works over on that other shelf that we already looked at. Once those works are concluded, I'll be moving them over here. Because uh, this is mostly stuff that's either concluded or at least it's on a hiatus like Vagabond and Real to where, well, Real's back from hiatus, but it's releasing so slowly uh, that it doesn't make it difficult for me. Like I can separate it over here and it's not too hard for me to add one volume in every however long it's going to take. Uh, whereas stuff like uh, Opossums and uh, Dead Dead Demons have regularly released volumes, so it would be a pain for me to have to keep adding books into this shelf. Anyway, so Nihei, I have uh, Blam, Biomega, Abara, and Knights of Sidonia. I do not have Noise. That is the one major thing that I don't have of his in English. And of course, the his like short stories, like the one that's in the Halo graphic novel, I don't have that either. Now, next to his works, and this is going to completely like negate everything I said about keeping ongoing separated from uh, concluded, but just don't give me grief here. But I have my Rumiko Takahashi section. So first I have Rumik Theater 1 or Double, and then I have another Rumik Theater volume followed by uh, Rumik World Trilogy. 
there are a few of those older compilation books that I don't have. I think two more that I don't have actually. So I need to find those at some point for a good price. Then I have Ursei Yatsura, the two in one editions. There's going to be 17 total. We have 10 out right now. I have volume 10 in my recent releases stack that need to be read because uh, I only have up to volume nine on this shelf. And then My Sony Koku is also currently being re-released. Uh, I have volume four of the new release also on my shelf of stuff that I need to read. And this is what I said about like, this is kind of completely going against my strategy of separating ongoing stuff from uh, concluded things because Ursei Atsura is going to have another seven volumes and then My Sony Koku is I think going to be 10 volumes total. So there's a lot more material I'm going to be adding in here, but I didn't have room over on the shelf with all the other Viz signature books, so that's why I decided to put them over here, whatever. Uh, I, I just had to get over it. Uh, next to that, of course, is Ranma One Half, and then next to Ranma One Half, we have One Pound Gospel and the Inuyasha Viz Big Editions. I left a little bit of space, you can see, next to uh, Inuyasha right there, so I can have space for a couple more volumes of Takahashi work on this shelf before I start having to beat myself up. And then at the bottom, we get the Urasawa section with Monster, 20th Century and 21st Century Boys, which just recently, that last volume came out. Uh, Pluto, Mujirushi, and Sneeze. And then it goes into uh, alphabetical order of, uh, well, first the hardcovers for Drifting Classroom, and then alphabetical order of Viz signature books. So Dorohedoro, Fire Punch, and then the first few volumes of Ikigami are on this side. And then I'm gonna take y'all around. So this is what I meant by using it as a room separator because now I have the ability to use the back side of this shelf. So continuing at the top here, we've got the rest of Ikigami, Not Simple, Ran in the Gray World, Tenjo Tenge, Tokyo Ghoul, and Tokyo Ghoul Re. And then the Legend of Zelda Legendary Editions followed by the uh, Link to the Past, My the Psychic Girl, Neon Genesis Evangelion, Pokemon, the stuff uh, that's not Pokemon Adventures, and the first two volumes of Banana Fish, and we come back around this away. The rest of Banana Fish, Cross Game, Excel Saga, Flame of Rekka, just missing one volume there you can see. Hide and Closer, and then move down one more time. Magi, this is a series by Seishi Kishimoto, who's the twin brother of Masashi Kishimoto, creator of Naruto. And then those are some uh, just issues. Uh, the big black block there is Cobra, which was published by Viz Media back in the late 80s. And then the ones that are bagged and boarded are some Devilman issues. Uh, then next to that is Aqua Knight by the same creator as uh, Battle Angel Alita. It's volume one out of the three that are currently available. Animal Land, Parasite, Seven Deadly Sins, and then moving back to this row, we get the rest of Seven Deadly Sins. Scooting the camera down a little bit. Uh, next to Inuyashiki. I was by the same creator as Gantz. I did own Gantz before, and then I decided to sell it because uh, I wanted those three-in-one editions that had been coming out, but then I decided to not get the three-in-one editions because I wanted, well, I got a few of those, and then I sold them because I am convinced that Gantz will be getting a hardcover release. And I felt like if I was so convinced, if I, if I sold them, this sounds silly, but that, that I'd put that out in the world and that there's a better chance that it might happen if I was to do that. So that's why I don't have Gantz in my collection right now, but I do have Inuyashiki. Akira got the hardcover editions, Battle Angel, Alita, and Last Order, Ghost in the Shell, Sailor Moon Eternal editions, and then down at the bottom shelf, scoot all the way back, look at the bottom here. We've got Flowers of Evil, Pink, Tropic of the Sea, I've got half of the volumes of Mobile Suit Gundam The Origin, the three hardcover editions of Helsing, Seven Little Sons of the Dragon, which is a bunch of short stories by the same creator as uh, Delicious in Dungeon, followed by uh, uh, Skullface bookseller Honda-san, Afro Samurai, Devilman, Devilman Grimoire, Devilman vs. Hades, Magical Girl Apocalypse, Super Sentai Himitsu Sentai Gorenger, Super Dimensional Love Gun, 
the first three out of five hardcovers of Battle Royale, The Troublemakers, Speed Racer, the hardcover box set, The Walking Man, Dementia 21, Volumes 1 and 2, Otherworldly Barbara 1 and 2, and Volume 1 of The Poe Clan. And that wraps everything up. Just kidding, that wasn't everything. There's also this stack of books. Um, these are more recent releases that I haven't read yet. I alluded to that when I was talking about uh, My Sonic Goku or Seiyatsura and I think Pokemon as well. So these are all recent pickups, um, things that I've gotten over the past few months that haven't been read just yet. Um, and then Pokemon Adventures 7 is on the side over here because I'm currently reading that one at the moment. I'm a little bit behind on my Pokemon reading, so please forgive me. But now, with this stack of books, this last stack of like 10 books, this is the end of my collection tour. So that's my library. 2,600 plus volumes of manga collected over almost 20 years. So there's a lot of stuff in here, um, a lot of things that I still need to or want to get in the future. So this is ever growing and I have no idea, you know, I'm, I'm not gonna stop collecting any time in my life. That's just not something that's gonna happen. Um, so who knows how big this is gonna get by the time I'm, I'm done. And when I say I'm done, I mean like when I take my dirt nap. But um, yeah, it's fun to look at this stuff. I hope this was enjoyable. I hope if you watched this that you had fun kind of touring my library with me. Whatever recommendations for series that you don't see on my shelves uh, that you would give to me, go ahead and comment down below because I'm always looking for new stuff to check out. Um, and oh, I did mention that I have plans for expansion. So that shelf here, the one that I used, I'm gonna turn the camera a little bit, both sides of, that uh, five by five Ikea Kallax or Kallax shelf, I will be very soon getting a second one. And you can see there's an aisle that I've created there. Uh, behind that shelf is all my like Marvel and DC comics and stuff. So I'm gonna be pushing this shelf further back. When I say pushing, I mean, I'm gonna take everything out and then I'm gonna shift it back a little bit. And then I'm gonna be getting another one of those and basically creating another aisle right here. So I'll have another five by five, so 50 more cubes worth of space for, for more books. And what I'm gonna wind up doing is just moving stuff around so I'm not gonna have like an empty shelf and then a full shelf next to it because that'd look silly. But I'm gonna move things around so I'm gonna have like a lot more room over on the Shonen Jump shelf because Shonen Jump is the majority of the books that I get. At least half of them go on that shelf whenever they come in. So that's the shelf I need more room on. And also there's a lot more Shonen Jump stuff that I don't have that I have been picking up and collecting, stuff that I sold in the past that I'm repurchasing. Um, so I definitely need more room over there, but that's gonna happen in the next couple weeks. So this video seems a little bit superfluous or a little bit um, ahead or poorly timed, I guess, because I could just wait a couple weeks and then be like, oh, hey, I got another shelf. But I guess I could make another video entirely just saying like, hey, look, I got a new shelf. This is me putting it together and deciding what to put on it, if that's something that would interest people. So yeah, I guess that's it. Um, so thank you so much for spending this time with me. If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. Um, if you've been here for a while, thank you for deciding to spend more time with me in watching this video and stuff. It always means a lot to me. I hope that it was entertaining for you and in some way informative. Um, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace out.